for more great videos and learning tutorials, or to download the exercises that go with these videos, please visit our website at www.createthenet.com. That was www.createthenet.com. In our previous videos, we've talked a lot about tags and what they are. For example, we have here the H1 tag. And tags always begin with an opening bracket and then the tag name and then have a closing bracket. In addition, wherever there's an opening tag, there also needs to be a closing tag. So here I have my opening H1 tag and then I have my closing H1 tag. Whatever comes in between the opening and closing is said to be contained within the tag. So here I have my heading 1 tag. The text home page has been marked with that tag. Now, oftentimes tags are used just by themselves, just as we've been doing. But oftentimes tags have what are called attributes. And you can use those attributes to further define the way that tag should act. Now, Almost every tag inside of HTML has a different set of attributes. Some tags share attributes, but almost every tag is going to have its own set of attributes. And there's lots of references online that you can go to to look up HTML tags and their attributes and the format that they take. But probably the most common attribute out there that goes along with almost every single HTML tag is the ID attribute. And all the ID attribute does is it names a particular element on a page. And this can be very useful if you want to refer to a particular element or a particular place in a document. For example, in your, HT, in your uh, CSS, you may want to format a um, particular heading um, in a certain way. You can ID that with a tag or with an ID attribute and then call that out. And you'll see more about that when we deal with IDs in CSS. But to put an attribute on a tag, all you have to do is click inside of the opening tag. Now I've clicked right before the closing bracket there and typed a space. When I do that, Dreamweaver, if you're using Dreamweaver, is going to bring up a shortcut of all the possible attributes that you can use there. And the attribute that I'm looking for is ID. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on ID and you're going to see it places it in there and then types an equal sign and puts a double quote. That's always going to be the format that you're going to type your attributes in. It's going to be attribute equals and then the value inside of quotation marks. So I'm going to go ahead and click there and I'm going to type main heading and now this H1 statement has the ID of main heading. I could do the same thing down here. Let's say I wanted to give this list of participants an ID. So that way I can grab or format these list of participants a little bit differently. I'm going to go ahead and click in the opening OL tag and again type the ID attribute. I'll hit enter. Dreamweaver will automatically put the equals and the quotation marks in there and I can go ahead and type participants as the ID name. So now again in JavaScript or in CSS or anywhere I want to call out this particular list I can do so by using the ID or the name participants. And again, ID isn't the only attribute that you can use with an HTML tag. It's just probably the most commonly used. If I come down here a little bit more, you're going to see I have my table tags here. And if I click in the opening table tag and hit enter, you're going to see that I get, so again, some attributes. Now, I have the ID attribute. I just need to scroll down and find it. And there's the ID attribute. And I'm going to go ahead and name this test scores. So now this table has a name called test scores. Now, 
some tags can have more than one attribute on them. All the tags that we've done so far have just had the one attribute, and in this case ID. And again, you can see in the live preview here I'm clicking, the attribute ID doesn't actually do anything in and of itself. But let's go ahead and again scroll down, and here's this table tag. And I'm going to go ahead and click to the right of my first attribute and hit a space. And I'm going to get that list of attributes again. And the attribute that I want to use this time is BG color. I'm going to go ahead and double click on that. And you'll see it puts the attribute name in. And again, it follows it with an equal sign and a double quotation mark. So now I can use Dreamweaver and I can find the background color that I want to use for this table. I can go into my color wheel here and maybe select blue as my base color, but move this up so it's sort of like a light blue there. When I click OK, it will put that color code in. So this is now going to be the background color for my table. I'll click. And there we go, and we see that attribute has been applied to that table. One final one I'll go ahead and do, I'll go ahead and click here, and I'm going to type a W, and you're going to see there's the attribute width. And this will allow me to set the width of this table. And I'm going to say the width of this table is 300 pixels wide, or 300 px. And when I click, you'll see my table became wider. You're also going to notice that by default, headings in my table, not only are they bold, but they're also centered in the cell. That's another notable difference there. But again, most of the things that we've done here, as far as changing the background color or the width, we would probably want to do that in CSS, not with HTML attributes. Um, the reason for that is CSS can be applied to multiple pages, whereas if you were to format this table with just attributes, you would have to reformat that table on every single page. So that's a short video on HTML tag attributes and some of the things you can do with them. Also, if you're interested in seeing the high definition 1280 by 720 videos, please go to createthenet.com. When we upload these videos to video sharing services, they always shrink the video size down and decrease the quality so they come out a little bit fuzzy. If you go to the website, you can see the full resolution versions of these videos.